Number 1, Opening Credits During the title sequence there is a sun in the sky, with several rotating bands around it, depicting events from this world's history. The sequence opens with a picture of a city in flames, on the slopes of an erupting volcano, next to a watching dragon, and a boat full of people. This scene represents the Doom of Valyria, a series of massive volcanic eruptions and earthquakes, that destroyed the Valyrian civilization on Essos. The people on the boat, represent the Targaryen family, and their dragons fleeing the disaster and invading Westeros almost a century later. The second time the bands are seen, they depict Robert's Rebellion, where we see a dragon, which represents Aerys Targaryen, battling a stag, which represents the Baratheons, a lion, which represents the Lannisters, and a dire wolf, which represents the Starks. The final picture, shows all the animals bowing to the triumphant stag, symbolizing Robert Baratheon winning the rebellion, and usurping the throne. In Season 8, the opening titles go through a major redesign. The astrolabe shows murals depicting three crucial events, that took place during the run of the show, and led to its current moment in history. These, are, the Breach of the Wall, the Red Wedding, and the Birth of Daenerys Dragons. Number 2, Books Connections. The first two seasons, respectively covered George R. R. Martin's novels, A Game of Thrones, and A Clash of Kings. While the third season covered about two-thirds of the third novel, A Storm of Swords, the fourth season covered the rest of A Storm of Swords, and chapters from the fourth and fifth novels, A Feast for Crows, and A Dance with Dragons. The fifth season covered almost entirely A Feast for Crows, A Dance with Dragons, and even early events of the unreleased sixth novel, The Winds of Winter. Seasons 6 through 8 were partially based on unpublished storylines. Martin provided showrunners David Benioff and Dan Wise, that would reportedly appear in The Winds of Winter and the last book of the series, A Dream of Spring. There were several major changes, the showrunners saw fit to make, while adapting the remaining books to the television medium. However, they claimed on several occasions, that the ending of the show would be almost exactly similar to Martin's original idea, for the ending of the book series. Martin explained that there have been small changes between the books and the show since the first season, and that like in the butterfly effect, some of these have led to larger changes later on. He once stated, the longer the show goes on, the bigger the butterflies become. And now we have reached the point where the beat of butterfly wings, is stirring up storms. Number 3, Cost Production The average cost of production per episode of the show, up to season 6, was around $6 million, with the most expensive episode being the episode 9 of season 2, called Blackwater, which cost a reported $8 million. However, HBO decided to set a budget of $100 million for season 6, which meant each episode of the season had an average production cost of $10 million. This put the show on par with Friends, as the most expensive television show of all time, although most of the budget of Friends went to its star's salaries, rather than the production of the show. Number 4, The War of the Roses Much of the inspiration for The War of the Five Kings in the series, comes from The War of the Roses, a series of dynastic wars in the 15th century, where the rivaling houses of York and Lancaster, fought for the throne of England. The families Stark and Lannister, are clearly inspired by these factions, as are several other characters. The Mad King Aerys II, is based on Henry VI of Lancaster, who also suffered from bouts of insanity. His wife, Margaret of Anjou, nicknamed the She-Wolf of France, was a basis for Cersei Lannister, as both women were fiercely protective of their sons, and ruthlessly ruled the country, in the absence of their husbands. The inspiration for Joffrey Baratheon, draws from many sadistic and unbalanced rulers, such as Roman Emperor Caligula, and 15th century English Prince Edward of Lancaster. He was also inspired by Richard II, who was an inexperienced boy king, who constantly misused his powers, and who became a ruthless, vengeful tyrant, that caused his own downfall, by making many powerful enemies. 
Number 5, The Fourth Prophecy In the flashback scene, at the beginning of Season 5, Maggie the Frog tells young Cersei Lannister that she will marry a king, be a queen for a while, and that she will have three children, while the king will have twenty. The series omits a fourth prophecy, that is present in the books, which is that she will perish by the hands of her Belonkar, High Valyrian word that stands for little brother. Although Cersei believes the brother in question to be Tyrion, fans thought that the prophecy could refer to Jaime, in connection to his redemption arc. However, in the final season, Cersei and Jaime perish in a rockfall, when Daenerys attacks King's Landing. Some claim that Maggie the Frog's prediction was therefore false, but others pointed out that the prophecy technically came true. Because by holding her, Jaime convinces her not to escape her destiny. Number 6, Westeros Author George Martin has stated that in the books, Westeros is roughly the size of South America, which is 4,700 miles long, and 3,300 miles at its widest point. However, on the show, it is considerably smaller. It's 2,000 miles long, and 900 miles at its widest. Although the Wall is the largest structure in Game of Thrones, it is not the tallest. In the books, the tallest structure is the High Tower in Old Town. And the second tallest is the Great Pyramid of Marine. The lands north of the Wall are mostly uncharted, but according to Martin, this area could be as large as Canada, meaning that it would encompass almost half of Westeros. Over the course of its eight seasons, the show has filmed in ten countries, including Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Morocco, Malta, Spain, Croatia, Iceland, United States, Canada, and Scotland. Number 7, The Dragons The names of Daenerys's dragons, foreshadows their roles in the series. Viserion was named after her cruel brother Viserys, who was openly antagonistic to her, and only used her for his own purposes. Viserion perishes due to the Night King, and is resurrected a white, thereby becoming her adversary. Rhaegal was named after her older brother Aegar, who was known to be kind and honorable, and was beloved throughout Westeros. When Rhaegal is gone, all the kindness that seemed to be left in Daenerys, seems to be gone as well. Finally, Drogon was named after her husband Khal Drogo, who vowed to conquer and destroy Westeros and ravage its people. In the end, Daenerys uses Drogon to destroy King's Landing and its population. He is the largest of Daenerys's dragons, with black and red scales, and is considered in the novels to be the reincarnation of Balerion the Black Dread. Balerion was the largest of Aegon the Conqueror's dragons, and was also responsible for the creation of the Iron Throne, which Drogon destroys near the end of the series. Thanks for watching.